Hindu deities are the gods and goddesses in Hinduism. The terms and epithets for deity within the diverse traditions of Hinduism vary, and include Deva, Devi, Ishvara, Bhagavan, and Bhagavati. The deities of Hinduism have evolved from the Vedic era (second millennium BC) through the medieval era (first millennium AD) regionally within Nepal, India, and in Southeast Asia, and across Hinduism's diverse traditions. The Hindu deity concept varies from a personal god as in yoga school of Hindu philosophy, to 33 Vedic deities, to hundreds of Puranics of Hinduism. Illustrations of major deities include Vishnu, Shri, Lakshmi, Shiva, Sati, Brahma and Saraswati. These deities have distinct and complex personalities, yet are often viewed as aspects of the same ultimate reality called Brahman. From ancient times, the idea of equivalence has been cherished for all Hindus, in its texts and in early first millennium sculpture with concepts such as Harihara half Shiva, half Vishnu, Ardhanarishvara half Shiva, half Parvati, with myths and temples that feature them together, declaring they are the same. Major deities have inspired their own Hindu traditions, such as Vaishnavism, Shaivism and Shaktism, but with shared mythology, ritual grammar, theosophy, axiology and polycentrism. Some Hindu traditions such as Smartism from mid-first millennium AD, have included multiple major deities as henotheistic manifestations of Saguna Brahman, and as a means to realizing Nirguna Brahman, Hindu deities are represented with various icons and anacons, in paintings and sculptures, called murtis and pratimas. Some Hindu traditions, such as ancient Charvakas rejected all deities and concept of god or goddess, while 19th-century British colonial-era movements such as the Arya Samaj and Brahmo Samaj rejected deities and adopted monotheistic concepts similar to Abrahamic religions. Hindu deities have been adopted in other religions such as Jainism, and in regions outside India such as predominantly Buddhist Thailand and Japan where they continue to be revered in regional temples or arts. In ancient and medieval era texts of Hinduism, the human body is described as a temple, and deities are described to be parts residing within it, while the Brahman absolute reality, God, is described to be the same, or of similar nature, as the Atman self, soul, which Hindus believe is eternal and within every living being. Deities in Hinduism are as diverse as its traditions, and a Hindu can choose to be polytheistic, pantheistic, monotheistic, monistic, agnostic, atheistic or humanist. <laughs> Devas and Devas Deities in Hinduism are referred to as Deva masculine and Devi feminine. The root of these terms mean, "...heavenly, divine, anything of excellence." According to Douglas Harper, the etymological roots of Deva mean, a shining one, from asterisk div, to shine, and it is a cognate with Greek dios, divine, and Zeus, and Latin deus, old Latin devos. In the earliest Vedic literature, all supernatural beings are called asuras. By the late Vedic period, tilde 500 BC, benevolent supernatural beings are referred to as Deva asuras. In post-Vedic texts, such as the Puranas and the Ithihasas of Hinduism, the Devas represent the good, and the Asuras the bad. In some medieval Indian literature, Devas are also referred to as Suras and contrasted with their equally powerful, but malevolent half-brothers referred to as the Asuras. Hindu deities are part of Indian mythology, both Devas and Devas feature in one of many cosmological theories in Hinduism. Characteristics of Vedic era deities In Vedic literature, Devas and Devas represent the forces of nature and some represent moral values such as the Adityas, Varuna, and Mitra, each symbolizing the epitome of a specialized knowledge, creative energy, exalted and magical powers The most referred to Devas in the Rig Veda are Indra, Agni fire, and Soma, with fire deity. Called the friend of all humanity, it and Soma being the two celebrated in a yajna fire ritual that marks major Hindu ceremonies. Savitar, Vishnu, Rudra later given the exclusive epithet of Shiva, and Prajapati later Brahma are gods and hence Devas. The Vedas describes a number of significant Devas such as Ushas dawn, Prithvi earth, Aditi cosmic moral order, Saraswati river, knowledge, Vak sound, Nirdi destruction, Ratri night, Aranyani forest, and bounty goddesses such as Dinsana, Raka, Puramdi, Parendi, Bharati, Mahi among others are mentioned in the Rigveda. Shri, also called Lakshmi, appears in late Vedic texts dated to be pre-Buddhist, but verses dedicated to her do not suggest that her characteristics were fully developed in the Vedic era. 
All gods and goddesses are distinguished in the Vedic times, but in the post-Vedic texts tilde 500 BC to 200 AD, and particularly in the early medieval era literature, they are ultimately seen as aspects or manifestations of one Brahman, the supreme power. Ananda Kumaraswamy states that devas and asuras in the Vedic lore are similar to angels Theoi gods and titans of Greek mythology, both are powerful but have different orientations and inclinations, the devas representing the powers of light and the asuras representing the powers of darkness in Hindu mythology. According to Kumaraswamy's interpretation of devas and asuras, both these natures exist in each human being, the tyrant and the angel is within each being, the best and the worst within each person struggles before choices and one's own nature, and the Hindu formulation of devas and asuras is an eternal dance between these within each person. The devas and asuras, angels and titans, powers of light and powers of darkness in Rigveda, although distinct and opposite in operation, are in essence consubstantial, their distinction being a matter not of essence but of orientation, revolution or transformation. In this case, the titan is potentially an angel, the angel still by nature a titan, the darkness in Actu is light, the light in potentia darkness, whence the designations Asura and Deva may be applied to one and the same person according to the mode of operation, as in Rigveda 1.163.3, Trita art thou Agni by interior operation. Topic. Characteristics of medieval era deities In the Puranas and the Ithihasas with the embedded Bhagavad Gita, the Devas represent the good, and the Asuras the bad. According to the Bhagavad Gita 16 .6 all beings in the universe have both the divine qualities sampad and the demonic qualities asori sampad within each. The 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita states that pure god-like saints are rare and pure demon-like evil are rare among human beings, and the bulk of humanity is multi-charactered with a few or many faults. According to Janine Fowler, the Gita states that desires, aversions, greed, needs, emotions in various forms, are facets of ordinary lives, and it is only when they turn to lust, hate, cravings, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness, hypocrisy, violence, cruelty and such negativity and destruction inclined that natural human inclinations metamorphose into something demonic asura. The epics and medieval era texts, particularly the Puranas, developed extensive and richly varying mythologies associated with Hindu deities, including their genealogies. Several of the Purana texts are named after major Hindu deities such as Vishnu, Shiva and Devi. Other texts and commentators such as Adi Shankara explain that Hindu deities live or rule over the cosmic body as well in the temple of human body. They remark that the sun deity is the eyes, the Vayu the nose, the Prajapati the sexual organs, the Lokapalas the ears, Chandra the mind, Mitra the inward breath, Varuna the outward breath, Indra the arms, Burhaspati the speech, Vishnu, whose stride is great, is the feet, and Maya is the smile. Topic. Symbolism Edelman states that gods and anti-gods of Hinduism are symbolism for spiritual concepts. For example, god Indra a diva and the anti-god Virakana and Asura question a sage for insights into the knowledge of the self. Virakana leaves with the first given answer, believing now he can use the knowledge as a weapon. In contrast, Indra keeps pressing the sage, churning the ideas, and learning about means to inner happiness and power. Edelman suggests that the diva-asura dichotomies in Hindu mythology may be seen as narrative depictions of tendencies within ourselves. Hindu deities in Vedic era, states Mahoney, are those artists with powerfully inward transformative, effective and creative mental powers. In Hindu mythology, everyone starts as an asura, born of the same father. Asuras who remain asura share the character of powerful beings craving for more power, more wealth, ego, anger, unprincipled nature, force and violence. The asuras who become devas in contrast are driven by an inner voice, seek understanding and meaning, prefer moderation, principled behavior, aligned with urta and dharma, knowledge and harmony. The god Deva and anti-god Asura, states Edelman, are also symbolically the contradictory forces that motivate each individual and people, and thus Deva-Asura dichotomy is a spiritual concept rather than mere genealogical category or species of being. 
In the Bhagavata Purana, saints and gods are born in families of asuras, such as Mahabali and Prahlada, conveying the symbolism that motivations, beliefs and actions rather than one's birth and family circumstances define whether one is deva-like or asura-like. Ishvara Another Hindu term that is sometimes translated as deity is Ishvara, or alternatively various deities are described, state Sorajakul et al., as, "...the personifications of various aspects of one and the same Ishvara". The term Ishvara has a wide range of meanings that depend on the era and the school of Hinduism. In ancient texts of Indian philosophy, Ishvara means supreme soul, Brahman highest reality, ruler, king or husband depending on the context. In medieval era texts, Ishvara means God, supreme being, personal God, or special self depending on the school of Hinduism. Among the six systems of Hindu philosophy, Samkhya and Mimamsa do not consider the concept of Ishvara, i.e., a supreme being, relevant. Yoga, Vaisheshika, Vedanta, and Naya schools of Hinduism discuss Ishvara, but assign different meanings. Early Naya school scholars considered the hypothesis of a deity as a creator god with the power to grant blessings, boons and fruits, but these early Naya scholars then rejected this hypothesis, and were non-theistic or atheists. Later scholars of Naya school reconsidered this question and offered counter-arguments for what is Ishvara and various arguments to prove the existence of omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent deity god. Vaisheshika school of Hinduism, as founded by Kannada in 1st millennium BC, neither required nor relied on creator deity. Later Vaisheshika school adopted the concept of Ishvara, states Klaus Klostermeyer, but as an eternal god who co-exists in the universe with eternal substances and atoms, but he "...winds up the clock, and lets it run its course." Ancient Mimamsa scholars of Hinduism questioned what is Ishvara deity, god? They considered a deity concept unnecessary for a consistent philosophy and moksha soteriology. .In Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy, Isvara is neither a creator god, nor a savior god. This is called one of the several major atheistic schools of Hinduism by some scholars. Others, such as Jacobson, state that Samkhya is more accurately described as non-theistic. Deity is considered an irrelevant concept, neither defined nor denied. In Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy, in Yoga school of Hinduism, it is any personal deity, Ishta Deva or Ishta Devata, or spiritual inspiration, but not a creator god. Witcher explains that while Patanjali's terse verses in the Yoga Sutras can be interpreted both as theistic or non theistic, Patanjali's concept of Isvara in Yoga philosophy functions as a transformative catalyst or guide for aiding the yogin on the path to spiritual emancipation." The Advaita Vedanta school of Hinduism asserted that there is no dualistic existence of deity or deities. There is no otherness nor distinction between Jiva and Ishvara. God Ishvara, Brahman, is identical with the Atman soul within each human being in Advaita Vedanta school, and there is a monistic universal absolute oneness that connects everyone and everything, states this school of Hinduism. This school, states Anantanand Rambachan, has perhaps exerted the most widespread influence. The Dvaita sub school of Vedanta Hinduism, founded in medieval era, Ishvara is defined as a creator god that is distinct from Jiva individual souls in living beings. In this school, God creates individual souls, but the individual soul never was and never will become one with God. The best it can do is to experience bliss by getting infinitely close to God. Number of deities Yaska, the earliest known language scholar of India tilde 500 BC, notes Wilkins, mentions that there are three deities devas according to the Vedas. Agni fire, whose place is on the earth, Vayu wind, whose place is the air, and Surya sun, whose place is in the sky. This principle of three worlds or zones, and its multiples is found thereafter in many ancient texts. The Samhitas, which are the oldest layer of text in Vedas enumerate 33 Devas, either 11 each for the three worlds, or as 12 Adityas, 11 Rudras, 8 Vasus and 2 Ashvins in the Brahmanas layer of Vedic texts, the Rigveda states in hymn 1.139.11 <laughs> Millions, one or one Ness 33 divinities are mentioned in other ancient texts, such as the Yajurveda, however, there is no fixed number of deities 
In Hinduism any more than a standard representation of deity. There is, however, a popular perception stating that there are 33 million deities in Hinduism. Most, by far, are goddesses, state Falston and Abbott, suggesting, "...how important and popular goddesses are," in Hindu culture. No one has a list of the 33 category goddesses and gods, but scholars state all deities are typically viewed in Hinduism as emanations or manifestation of genderless principle called Brahman, representing the many facets of ultimate reality." This concept of Brahman is not the same as the monotheistic separate god found in Abrahamic religions, where god is considered, states Broad, as "...creator of the world, above and independent of human existence," while in Hinduism, "...god, the universe, human beings and all else is essentially one thing." and everything is connected oneness, the same God is in every human being as Atman, the eternal self. <inaudible> Iconography and practices Hinduism has an ancient and extensive iconography tradition, particularly in the form of Murti Sanskrit, Murti Iast, Murti, or Vigraha or Pratima. A murti is itself not the god in Hinduism, but it is an image of God and represents emotional and religious value. A literal translation of murti as idol is incorrect, states Janine Fowler, when idol is understood as superstitious end in itself. Just like the photograph of a person is not the real person, a murti is an image in Hinduism but not the real thing, but in both cases the image reminds of something of emotional and real value to the viewer. When a person worships a murti, it is assumed to be a manifestation of the essence or spirit of the deity. The worshipper's spiritual ideas and needs are meditated through it, yet the idea of ultimate reality or Brahman is not confined in it. A murti of a Hindu deity is typically made by carving stone, wood working, metal casting, or through pottery. Medieval era texts describing their proper proportions, positions, and gestures include the Puranas, Agamas, and Samhitas, particularly the Shilpa Shastras. The expressions in a murti vary in diverse Hindu traditions, ranging from ugra symbolism to express destruction, fear and violence Durga, Kali, as well as samawa symbolism to express joy, knowledge and harmony Saraswati, Lakshmi. Samawa images are most common in Hindu temples. Other murti forms found in Hinduism include the linga, a murti is an embodiment of the divine, the ultimate reality or Brahman to some Hindus. In religious context, they are found in Hindu temples or homes, where they may be treated as a beloved guest and serve as a participant of puja rituals in Hinduism. A murti is installed by priests, in Hindu temples, through the prana pratishtha ceremony, whereby state Harold Coward and David Goa, the "...divine vital energy of the cosmos is infused into the sculpture," and then the divine is welcomed as one would welcome a friend. In other occasions, it serves as the center of attention in annual festive processions and these are called Utsava Murti. Temple and worship In Hinduism, deities and their icons may be hosted in a Hindu temple, within a home or as an amulet. The worship performed by Hindus is known by a number of regional names, such as Puja. This practice in front of a murti may be elaborate in large temples, or be a simple song or mantra muttered in home, or offering made to sunrise or river or symbolic anakon of a deity. Archaeological evidence of deity worship in Hindu temples trace puja rituals to Gupta Empire era tilde 4th century AD. In Hindu temples, various pujas may be performed daily at various times of the day. In other temples, it may be occasional. The puja practice is structured as an act of welcoming, hosting, honoring the deity of one's choice as one's honored guest, and remembering the spiritual and emotional significance the deity represents the devotee. Jan Gonda, as well as Diana L. Ek, states that a typical puja involves one or more of sixteen steps shodasha upachara traceable to ancient times, the deity is invited as a guest, the devotee hosts and takes care of the deity as an honored guest, praise hymns with dupa or ardi along with food naivadya is offered to the deity, after an expression of love and respect the host takes leave, and with affection expresses goodbye to the deity. The worship practice may also involve reflecting on spiritual questions, with image serving as support for such meditation. Deity worship, bhakti, visiting temples, and puja rites are not mandatory and is optional in Hinduism. It is the choice of a Hindu. It may be a routine daily affair for some Hindus, periodic ritual, or infrequent for some. 
Worship practices in Hinduism are as diverse as its traditions, and a Hindu can choose to be polytheistic, pantheistic, monotheistic, monistic, agnostic, atheistic, or humanist. Topic. Examples Major deities have inspired a vast genre of literature such as the Puranas and Agama texts as well their own Hindu traditions, but with shared mythology, ritual grammar, theosophy, axiology and polycentrism. Vishnu and his avatars are at the foundation of Vaishnavism, Shiva for Shaivism, Devi for Shaktism, and some Hindu traditions such as Smarta traditions who revere multiple major deities five as henotheistic manifestations of Brahman absolute metaphysical reality, while there are diverse deities in Hinduism, states Lawrence, "...exclusivism, which maintains that only one's own deity is real," is rare in Hinduism. Julius Lipner, and other scholars, state that pluralism and "...polycentrism where other deities are recognized and revered by members of different denominations, has been the Hindu ethos and way of life. Trimurti and Tridevi The concept of triad or trimurti, trinity makes a relatively late appearance in Hindu literature, or in the second half of 1st millennium BC. The idea of triad, playing three roles in the cosmic affairs, is typically associated with Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva also called Mahesh, however, this is not the only triad in Hindu literature. Other triads include Tridevi, of three goddesses, Lakshmi, Saraswati and Durga in the text Devi Mahatmya, in the Shakta tradition, who further assert that Devi is the Brahman ultimate reality and it is her energy that empowers Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. The other triads, formulated as deities in ancient Indian literature, include sun creator, air sustainer, and fire destroyer, prana creator, food sustainer, and time destroyer. These triads, states Jan Gonda, are in some mythologies grouped together without forming a trinity, and in other times represented as equal, a unity and manifestations of one Brahman. In the Puranas, for example, this idea of threefold hypostatization is expressed as follows. They Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva exist through each other, and uphold each other, they are parts of one another, they subsist through one another, they are not for a moment separated, they never abandon one another. The triad appears in Maitrayaniya Upanishad, for the first time in recognized roles known ever since, where they are deployed to present the concept of three guna, the innate nature, tendencies and inner forces found within every being and everything, whose balance transform and keeps changing the individual and the world. It is in the medieval Puranic texts, Trimurti concepts appears in various contexts, from rituals to spiritual concepts. The Bhagavad Gita, in verses 9.18, 10.21-23 and 11.15, asserts that the triad or trinity is manifestation of one Brahman, which Krishna affirms himself to be. However, suggests Bailey, the mythology of triad is, "...not the influence nor the most important one." In Hindu traditions, rather the ideologies and spiritual concepts develop on their own foundations. Topic. Avatars of Hindu deities Hindu mythology has nurtured the concept of avatar, which represents the descent of a deity on earth. This concept is commonly translated as incarnation, and as an appearance, or manifestation. The concept of avatar is most developed in Vaishnavism tradition, and associated with Vishnu, particularly with Rama and Krishna. Vishnu takes numerous avatars in Hindu mythology. He becomes female, during the Samudra Manthan, in the form of Mahini, to resolve a conflict between the Devas and Asuras. His male avatars include Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, Narasimha, Vimana, Parashurama, Rama, Krishna, Buddha, and Kalki. Various texts, particularly the Bhagavad Gita, discuss the idea of avatar of Vishnu appearing to restore the cosmic balance whenever the power of evil becomes excessive and causes persistent oppression in the world. In Shaktism traditions, the concept appears in its legends as the various manifestations of Devi, the divine mother principle in Hinduism. The avatars of Devi or Parvati include Durga and Kali, who are particularly revered in eastern states of India, as well as Tantra traditions. Twenty-one avatars of Shiva are also described in Shaivism texts, but unlike Vaishnava traditions, Shaiva traditions have focused directly on Shiva rather than the avatar concept. 
Major regional and pan-Indian Hindu deities See also Hindu denominations Hindu iconography Hindu mythology Puranas List of Hindu deities Rigvedic deities Topic Notes Topic References Topic Sources Danielu, Alan, 1991, 1964. The Myths and Gods of India. Inner Traditions, Vermont, USA. ISBN 0 89281 354 7. Fuller, C.J. The Camphor Flame Popular Hinduism and Society in India. Princeton University Press, New Jersey. ISBN 0 691 12048X. Harman, William. Hindu Devotion. In Contemporary Hinduism, Ritual, Culture, and Practice, Robin Reinhard, ed. 2004, ISBN 1 57607 905 8. Kashyap, R. L. Essentials of Krishna and Shukla Yajurveda, SAKSI, Bangalore, Karnataka, ISBN 81 7994 032 2. Key, John. 2000. India, A History. New York, United States, Harper Collins Publishers. ISBN 0 00 638784 5. Patanayak, Devdit. 2009, Seven Secrets from Hindu Calendar Art. Westland, India. ISBN 978 81 89975 67 8. Monier Williams, Monier. 1974, Brahmanism and Hinduism, or Religious Thought and Life in India, as based on the Veda and other sacred books of the Hindus, Elebrin Classics, Adamant Media Corporation, ISBN 1 4212 6531 1. Retrieved 8 July 2007. Monier Williams, Monier. 2001, first published 1872, English Sanskrit Dictionary, Delhi, Mutilal Banarsidas, ISBN 81 206 1. 1509-3, retrieved 24 July 2007 Renew, Lewis 1964, The Nature of Hinduism, Walker Toropov, Brandon, Buckles, Luke 2011, Guide to World Religions, Penguin Swami Bhaskarananda, 1994. Essentials of Hinduism, Viveka Press ISBN 1-884852-02-5. Vastu Silpa Kosha, Encyclopedia of Hindu Temple Architecture and Vastu. S. K. Ramachandara Rao, Delhi, Divine Books, Lala Murari Lal Charya Oriental Series. ISBN 978-93-81218-51-8 Set Werner, Carol A. Popular Dictionary of Hinduism, Curzon Press 1994. ISBN 0-7007-0279-2. Further reading Chandra, Suresh 1998. Encyclopedia of Hindu Gods and Goddesses. Sarup and Sons, New Delhi, India. ISBN 81-7625-039-2. Patanayak, Devdit 2003. Indian Mythology, Tales, Symbols, and Rituals from the Heart of the Subcontinent. Inner Traditions, Bear and Company. ISBN 0-89281-870-0. Kinsley, David. Hindu Goddesses, Vision of the Divine Feminine in the Hindu Religious Traditions. Mutilal Banarsidas, New Delhi, India. ISBN 81-208-0379-5. External links A chart of the main Hindu deities with pictures.